Well, we've got an absolutely cracking day today. It's not as going to be as warm as, as it's been of late. There's low wind speeds and the sun's shining. It's just beautiful. We're going up this way, although on the way here I've noticed this little bundle of hills just there. Part of the Pentland Hills and I quite like the look of it. So I'll maybe do that another day. Um, this walk's about six miles. I started at uh, Glencore's Golf Club. Um, got off the bus there. Come up a road past Glencore's Church. Uh, over a main road. Not this steep road uh, to here. Uh, I'll show you a Google Earth flyover at the moment. To try and show you the route. Basically we're going from here up to Castle Law Fort, which we'll have a look at. Uh, Castle Law Hill Fort, it's an Iron Age hill fort, it's slightly unusual in that it has a souterrain attached to it. And uh, I know you're thinking to yourself, a souterrain? What the heck is that? Well, perhaps we'll find out. Um, we're skirting Castle Law Hill, which you can sort of see on the left and uh, we're continuing on a pretty well defined track and then at some point uh, we will leave that track and head up Allermuir Hill which you'll see coming uh, coming into view on, on the right hand side. Uh, on the map Allermuir Hill is marked as a viewpoint. Uh, I haven't been up on top of it before but I anticipate some excellent views towards Edinburgh. Now from there we're going to turn right over a, a kind of little kind of ridgy thing with a few little bumps, ups and downs uh, towards um, what the heck's it called? Kirketon Hill. Then after that we'll turn left uh, near another hill fort. I mean the whole area is bristling with hill forts. Uh, then we'll head down into the, the ski slope and uh, get a bus from a road. As I say, it's about six miles. It's very important if you're just at this spot and intending to go any further to check um, a government website. The, the MOD or the Ministry of Defence use this for live firing exercises. It would be a big waste of your time if you come up here and you saw the lights flashing and you couldn't go any further. Um, I found it quite easy to find the website. It's just key in um, MOD, Ministry of Defence, Pentland Hills, Castle Law Hill and I very quickly found the, the site I was looking for. It told you what days there was going to be live firing exercises. Today's not one of those days so we're alright. I am so looking forward to this. So enough, enough of this waffling, let's just go. <laughs> Well, we've come up just a short distance there. Um, this is the outer ramparts of Castle Law Hill Fort. And the souterrain, the entrance to the souterrain is just, just behind me. And also just behind me you can see Castle Law Hill. We're not going up the top of that, we're sort of skirting around the right hand side, then heading in the direction of Allermuir Hill, the viewpoint. Um, it looks as if the souterrain is, is open. How much more exciting can this get? I don't have a torch with me because it's underground. Um, but I can see there's a number of things positioned in the, in the grass here that are going to allow light in. So there will be some light in there. I can barely contain myself. Let's go in and have a look. <laughs>
Well, I'm in, I'm in the Souterrain. I've just noticed this other bit down here. There's another wee room in there. But there's a large puddle in the way. <laughs> I don't want to get my knees wet. I suspect it will look pretty similar to the, the bit we're in just now. Yeah. I mean, it's not really known what these souterrains were. They are all underground chambers, elongated in, in some case. I think this one's about 20 metres long. What was it used for? We don't really know. There's a number of theories. Um, that, that amongst the sort of theories that are on the go, as um, they, they were used for storage, for food perhaps, or stuff. Um, there's also the thought that maybe there were um, a place of refuge in times of trouble. Some people say maybe they had some kind of religious or um, spiritual uh, role to play. I don't know, it, it kind of seems to me uh, that it's a sort of place you would maybe use to bury your dead. Because it's not in the whole fort, it's on the outer defensive boundary of the whole fort. You know, it's, it's not in amongst where the people are. And you do get people um, buried underground in such kind of chambers, you know. Um, I think the refuge theory is unlikely. You know, if your hill fort's getting attacked, you're unlikely to take yourself underground where you are effectively going to be trapped. That's unlikely, you know. Um, a spiritual place, perhaps, you know. Storage is probably the most likely theory um, for you to sort of store stuff. Although, personally, I, I get more of a feeling for the, the burying of your dead thing. Maybe once they had just turned to bones, you would deposit a little dainty pile of bones in a pot in here. But then if, not, if nothing like that has been found, then that's probably nonsense. Fascinating. So there you go, it's our first souterrain. I think it's the first one I've ever been in. Absolutely fascinating. In addition to Castle Law Hill Fort, of which this is a part of, there's actually another, I think it's Castle Now Fort, not that far away. And as I said earlier, towards the end of the walk, there is another hill fort. This whole area is actually packed with hill forts. People um, living and defending themselves against others. I like the Romans. So let's carry on. We'll uh, skip to Castle or Hill and uh, be on our merry way. Shadows 
I am in my element. It's just always really good when you've never been on a bit of ground before. I mean, the, the Pentland Hills are quite extensive, but it's got the scope there for any number of walks. And I have been on part of the Pentland Hills before on a few occasions, but I've just not been in this bit here. There's, um, it's absolutely festooned with uh, purple heather. Yeah. I can see Aller Muir Hill just ahead. And I can also see this sort of little ridge of hills just to its right. So I can see exactly what's going on and how much upping and downing there's going to be. It looks okay, it looks nice, you know. It looks really nice. Well, this is a trick point on top of our Muir Hill. And then sitting here, I'm probably just going to get in everybody's way. But what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? No pie today. It's an oat bar. been an absolutely cracking walk. It's very hard to imagine scenery more stunning anywhere in the world. Never mind just Scotland. It's out of this world. The view that way, sort of deeper into the Pentland Hills, it's just, you know. And just behind me you've got views towards Arthur's Seat, Edinburgh, the Firth of Forth and um, what seems to be the whole of central Scotland. It's just awesome. This is a cherry and almond flapjack and I'm strangely excited to be eating this.
I was in the Royal Bank of Scotland in Glasgow the other day, a branch that has cash machines inside it, the city centre. And I noticed, and I think I've noticed before many years ago, but I must have just somehow forgotten. But one of the cash machines, and I had about four cash machines, one of them had a sign on it saying, this machine dispenses English banknotes, or something like that. And I thought, wow. I mean, it used to be the case a few decades ago, and it perhaps still happens these days, but I think to a much lesser extent, where if you were down in England, there'd be some places where you would hand over a Scottish bank note and they would look at it and go, nah, can't accept that, mate. <laughs> you know, and you thought, oh, that's pretty ridiculous, like, you know. As I say, I don't think it happens so much these days. I mean, anybody going abroad, I'm sure they must uh, take euros with them. I, I just, this is a bank that is pampering to the to the needs of idiots. Which, I suppose, just suggests that the bank itself is an absolute idiot. Whoever thought that up, as far as I'm concerned, wants to get sacked. If I had an account with the Royal Bank of Scotland, I would close it right away. Just because of that one sign. English banknotes. It just suggests that in, in some cases uh, Scottish banknotes aren't, aren't acceptable. The Royal Bank of Scotland. What a joke. So from here, um, I'm going to soak up the views for a while. I'm, 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 pretty, I'm blown away here, I really am. Um, and if, if go that way, I can see that well-defined path, a wee bit of opening, downing, then down into the, the ski centre. You know, when, when you watch YouTube videos, everybody's got a different personality, they've got a different way of putting, of making the video, a different way of coming across in the video, and as I say, everybody has different personalities, and for the people who watch YouTube videos, you might like the person that's in the video and their, their very personality, and perhaps the way they put the video over, and other people you might not like them. Just from a personal point of view, you think, I don't want to watch that. don't like him. <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know. I, I sometimes find, I, I've seen a couple of YouTubers, I think I've seen two YouTube channels where the people in the video occasionally go, woohoo! Um, it's usually when something good's going on, they go, woohoo! And the, it, that's a real turn off for me. As soon as anybody even looks as if they're going to say, woohoo! Um, I, I just turn it off, I can't be doing with it. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with it. As I said, it's just personalities and you like stuff or you don't like stuff. Just the way the world goes. I'm a, a non woohoo man. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to eat my cherry and almond uh, flavoured um, flatjack thingy here. And just soak all this up. I'll see you shortly.
Well, it's downhill from here towards the ski centre and I'll get a bus uh, on a road by there. I think it's a number four bus to Edinburgh. The, the, the walk's been quite indescribable, it's just been so beautiful, you know. Everywhere I look there's a, a stunning view, <laughs> you know. Um, there's the three bridges, three bridges at Queen's Ferry. North Berwick Law behind me. I can actually see, I can see mountains. I think I can see Ben Lomond and, and I think I can probably see Ben Leddy at Calendar. It's just... It's <laughs> anyway, uh, that, was, that was the walk. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now. Woohoo! I've gone, I've gone hoarse, I can't even say woohoo. Should be